What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Fanscription Podcast. This was not intentional. No. <laughs> I was wearing the same color shirt. <laughs> Definitely not intentional, but we're blending in today. Uh, it's also weird to have me threatening myself with a gun, like, right behind my back. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's right directly behind you. Yes. I'm sorry about that. Um, no, so, we usually have Rob on this show. Um, me and Rob usually talk about the fanscription stuff, but since Doug wrote this one, for Mary Poppins Returns, we have the other Walker brother here today. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. So excited, yes, indeed. Um, so we're going to go into your original feelings on the first Mary Poppins movie and why you like it so much, because you have a big reverence for that film. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it, well, part of it, I mean, it is a brilliant movie. I mean, I can watch it now. I mean, just editing the clips for the review of, of uh, Mary Poppins Returns, mm -hmm. uh, I, like, I'm already getting emotional just watching. Like, right, man, right. I got to see this movie again, even yeah. though I've seen it a million times. But um, when we were, uh, some people know, some people don't, I, I uh, was born in Italy because my dad was in the Navy, so we moved around a lot. And we only had, like, five movies, I think, that were in English, mm. and one of them was Mary Poppins. So ah. we just watched it over and over and over. So it's one of those things where not only do I love the movie, but I know it very well. Sure. And I know on many different levels why it works because I've just seen it so many times. And unlike a lot of other... Uh, movies we watched growing up it's not something where oh that gets worse as you get older it gets better and I just have a mad respect for movies that are made for children but can have a very different relevance if not more relevance when you're an adult sure you know there's just a you know to go off topic a little bit there's just this big interview with George Lucas talking about the prequels and stuff and he was saying I'm so curious how this have connects you heard about this? no <laughs> he's talking about you know they were made for 12 year olds and uh. he's, he's like still defending the prequels and everything and it's interesting because Star Wars uh, and especially you know Empire Strikes Back which got darker connected with everyone it seems like yeah and that became more of an adult thing almost you know what i mean i mean kids still like star wars obviously they're always going to like star wars if but... he made those for 12 year olds he makes very weird movies for right 12. those are very political <laughs> movies to the have for 12 year olds the original star wars movie i know that they tried to make like you know um the flash gordon and all that kind of stuff but I mean, there's definitely a thing about it that anyone can be interested in. Mary Poppins seems like that same kind of thing, even all these years later. It's got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, by the way. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I don't that, know that if that matters. But I, I, I mean, I, maybe that's why the uh, Mary Poppins Returns got 80%, because they're like, well, it's one of the few that's 100%, so we got to give it just a little bit of a knock. But, uh, right. yeah, no, it, it's just, it's really one of those where you look at the acting, you look at the way it's shot, you look at the music, and even the backstory, I mean, they're saving Mr. Banks took liberties, but mm. I mean, it's essentially that story. Right, right. Um, and you just see these two polar opposite creative geniuses, uh, you know, compromising. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, she didn't go 100% with Disney. Disney didn't go 100% uh, uh, with, with Travers. And they really came up with just this incredible product, you know, this incredible movie that uh, at least Disney was happy with. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't yeah. know if she ever fully was. <laughs> well, from the movie, at least. I mean, I know that's not like a very accurate account of everything mm -hmm. that happened happened but she seemed like she was like liked it enough maybe i don't know i okay so so they cheat a little bit in the movie again get a, a hand off topic mm. but at the end when she's crying in the movie saving mr bank she cries at the movie which did happen right but it's for the reason she said that she hated animation and seeing her characters with animated little cartoons she despised Oh, and she cried but the me. movie makes it look like she's crying at ah. Mr. Banks and thinking of her father, but then tries to hide it by saying, oh, I just can't abide by animation. But that was the reason. That was the reason. So she was so upset by the yeah, dancing Yeah, no, and she said she never wanted to work with them again, but eventually did with the Broadway one, where oh, she yeah. said, we can do this, but you're following my notes. Right. And then they waited until she died <laughs> to do the sequel, and I think that's very telling. Right. She's, she's been gone for a while now. Now, hasn't she? Yeah. Um, I mean, not, not super long. I think less than 10 years. Oh, really? Okay. I yeah. It was longer than that. No, it, because she had input on the uh, on the Broadway musical. Right. Okay. Uh, that, that's the, the only way they could do it. Out? I mean, again, don't quote me. I want to say like eight years ago. Oh, like so that. it's very recently. Okay. I, I could be wrong. I could be okay. totally wrong. I saw it around that time, so I'm assuming it came out right, around that. Right, sure, sure. 
Um, yeah, so, I mean, Mary Poppins connects with a lot of people. I mean, I remember, I think a lot of people do, growing up with that film, too. Um, I just I just loved um, uh, Bert. <laughs> I loved everything about Bert. <laughs> Mary Poppins! Yeah, I know, I mean, amazing accent. I know. Yeah, as a kid, you don't realize that kind of thing. No, like, I didn't either. I'm going to speak on talk like this, governor, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I watched it recently because Malcolm saw it for uh, uh, Tamara's Never Seen, mm-hmm. and uh, watching it again, it just gets funnier. <laughs> right, right. But he is so charming. I know. And he is so amazing nice, awesome, in that performance. Man. And I think that's very telling of, of just how likable an actor he is, yeah, that sure. he can do this accent that is just butchering. <laughs> I mean, just butchering the, this language, but at the same time, he is just so charming and so likable, you don't really care. You sure. see what a great performance. It still is, despite that. Right, the dancing and everything just like always caught my eye. And he never danced before. Right, He did right, a lot of physical that. comedy, but yeah. he never danced. And you watch the movie knowing that it's like, Holy smokes, you just can't. It Crazy. looks like he's been, you know, dancing all his life. Right. It feels like because he was such a physical comedian on the Dick Van Dyke show. I think it was very that, easy for right. him to do yeah, It was an easy it. segue into doing dancing and yeah. stuff like that. But man, it's still it's still a lot of fun to watch nowadays, too. I don't think Mary Poppins is one of those movies from the 60s. You know, sometimes you see that movies from the 60s that don't really age very well. No. Um, uh, a good example, even though I do like it. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang does not age very yeah. well. I haven't seen Chitty <laughs> that, Chitty Bang Bang in no, so but long. That's one of those, I, can't count I, on it, I love it, but it's just for kids. This is just for little, little kids. There's mm-hmm. a lot of great talent, and there's things that adults can appreciate, but the story is only for children, sure. where Mary Poppins can hit everybody. Everybody can see something amazing in it. Absolutely. Um, so I heard Mary Poppins Returns supposedly takes place 25 years after the original. Roughly around that time, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, you know, why didn't they try and adapt, in your opinion, why don't you think they tried to adapt some of the other stories? Because there's like eight books or something that uh, P.L. Travers made, right? I, I think, well, for one, I mean, maybe to her credit, they're just like, okay, we don't want to, you know, piss on her memory. Because <laughs> she hated the movie so much. Maybe uh-huh. they're like, you know what? Let her sleep. We'll just do our <laughs> own <sleep>. thing. Which, <laughs> if, if that's the case, fair enough. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's like, I think it'd be cool if they did other stories. But right. I mean, they, they are different and they clearly want to do a sequel to their version of Mary Poppins. Yeah, that makes so sense. it's like, I get it. In my opinion, a sequel doesn't even need to exist. I think it's pretty pointless. I think it's far too late. Right. Um, but if you're going to do it, the setup's not a not that bad a setup. Uh, having it years later, having Jane and Michael grown up, uh, having them deal with some sort of tragedy, I, I think is a good idea. Sure. Uh, you know, and having the uh, the mother pass, which has been done a million times in Disney films, but it's you can still deal with that in an interesting way. Mary Poppins dealing with that can be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, we get uh, evil bankers. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Colin Firth has like the same expression in the entire movie. Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's always, just... he's, yeah, he doesn't, like, doesn't look <laughs> angry, really, or like inquisitive or anything. He's always just kind of like... Yeah, like his evil laugh. If they had him do an evil laugh, he'd just be like... Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. That's it. And uh-huh. then, even at the end when he tries to throw up the balloon and it goes down, he's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's the entire time I was, and he's a really great actor. So yeah, it's, no, it's he's been a lot. He's been a lot of uh, good stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, and what what could he do with that character? I, I mean, know. he did. There, there's one part that made me laugh a little bit just because it, it's so silly. And he so has no emotion when he's like, "Get the children," which is so stupid. <laughs> but when they when they run out, and the guy hits the door. It just goes, "Fool, stop it." <laughs> I mean, there's just no emotion. <laughs> Even though, like, you know in the script, it's right. Fool, explanation point, explanation point. Stop them, five explanation points. It just right. came out, fool, stop them. <laughs> and that, that legit made me laugh. I almost thought, oh, maybe they are going to go comedic with him, but, right. but of course they don't. It's very downplayed, that performance is. And even, like, <laughs> um, at the end, um, when he's trying to tell Michael, that, like, to tell your children to stop lying or whatever, but it's, it's still, like, very, like, monotone almost. Yeah. So it's interesting... He, he raises that level. He that. points his finger, which right. I, now I'm trying to remember. We're not fit he, to run this pick. Yeah, yeah, I'm like trying to even run. remember if he yelled. He maybe he didn't. It's just the finger pointing made me think. No, he, did. he didn't really yell that much. <laughs> it's just it's just kind of like he raises his voice a little bit, but it's never yeah. like to a yell or anything. Yeah, yeah. no, it, his it, hair it's gets very messed British. Up. Yes. He looks disheveled. That's the farthest. <laughs> to go. That's the farthest to intense British anger. Right, <laughs> and that's one of the big problems you had with that movie was that they had a villain in the first place, where the original Mary Poppins didn't exactly have a strict villain. No, and I think that's. I mean, again, I, I don't know how 
truthful it was, but that's something that Travers in at least saving Mr. Banks was very much against. That don't make him a bad guy. Right. Don't make the father a bad guy. Don't make the bank a bad guy. It's not that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, these are people that think they're doing good and, and they lose track of what's important and different people have different ideas of what's important. Right. And that's, sure. again, you can, even in uh in the original, you know, uh, Dick Van Dyke playing Mr. Dawes. Right. You know, he, yeah. a, a, at the very end, I mean, yeah, he's sneaky, he's manipulative, but he's like, but, but this is cool. You benefit, I benefit. Well, we all win. You know, he's a little boy. He doesn't know. We'll, right. we'll, 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 we'll fix him up. It'll be okay. We have his best interest in mind. Uh, you know, and then at the end, Mr. Banks loses his job. And he laughs at the joke. He laughs so much he flies in the air and dies laughing. And it, it's such a weird, bizarre, joyful thing that Mr. Banks gets his job back. <laughs> I mean, it, it's so ridiculous, but it's mm -hmm. still so joyful and it's so happy. You know, where the, the one, the other one, oh, his balloon can't fly. Ah, oh, you suck. And it's like, that's <laughs> not cool. That's not very Poppins. <laughs> It, I don't know. I, I take it as a little bit of an insult when they're like, oh, well, it's just kind of like what you say with Lucas. Oh, they're just kids' films. It's like, no, and you know that. Right. Like, you know it's not just a kids' film. And you're just thinking, well, it's easier to do this. People will probably like it more, and they'll cheer more if they're trying to stop the bad guy. And you don't want to go for the complex stuff. You don't want to take the risk. Um, and Mary Poppins, weirdly enough, did have a lot of risks. I mean, you just look at how much Disney and the author butted heads. Right. I mean, it's like they don't and, and, about it. Well, and, and, <laughs> and the move, and the, uh, the money that went to that first movie. Yeah. I mean, how much it cost and how groundbreaking it right. was. And you have like a good five minutes of just this dude walking. And no talking, no anything. It's just him walking. And most of the, you know, at least half the movie is dancing with penguins and cartoons. Right. But, I mean, no kid is going to rewind that scene over and over. But that's what they want from this. They want you to rewind yeah. the scene. Get the bad guy. Yay. Oh, look at him being bad. And that's, it's too easy, man. It's too sure. easy. Uh, what did you think of the new Mary Poppins, of uh, Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins? Oh, she's fine. Yeah, I thought she was um, pretty good. I, I really like Emily Blunt. So I like, actually most, don't know her from much else. Really? In, she, in fact, this really might be the first thing I saw her in. <laughs> um, so I had no reference. Uh, but she's great yeah, in, uh, uh, Looper is a great movie. She's yeah, I haven't seen that. You should check out Looper. I, I hear it's good. Right. Um, but no, like she. She comes in and she's she's very stern and very strict, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even more than Andrews, yeah. uh, oh, I which think is so. impressive. Yeah. Um, and uh, to a point where, like I said before, when she smiles, it's a little weird. I, I never quite buy the it. The bathtub scene was always weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> because she's like very stern the whole time, and then she sits on the bathtub and it's yeah. like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like, like, what is that? Yeah, it is kind of strange. Yeah. So, uh, the... Sometimes when she has a little, like, a smirk, oh, do you really think so? You know, like, whenever it's playing to her vanity, sure. she does that well. Right. Uh, but whenever she's like, I'm legitimately enjoying this, it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, it sounds weird. I'd much rather have whoever's playing Poppins get the sternness down right. than the joyfulness mm -hmm. down in a weird way. Um, but, yeah, the perfect performance has both. And Andrews really did have both. Like, weirdly have both perfectly balanced like you don't see a performance that well balanced i mean right. just so perfect with both being very strict and domineering and then just being like so happy and full of life and right. kind and gentle it is just such a she won an oscar for it man mm -hmm. i mean it's like you can see why right and she didn't want to appear or didn't appear in the new one i guess because she was doing aquaman like voicing the, the, the character the, in aquaman the reason she gave from what i understand is that she said whoever the new mary poppins is it should be her movie i don't want to get in the way let, let her yeah, that makes sense yeah which is a very kind thing to say I think she's like, you're doing what? I have, I want a part of this. <laughs> I'm going to do Aquaman coming out the same day. Right. But I, I will say this. You know, I mean, you know uh, the Angela Lansbury part. Yeah, yeah that that's was what I was going to ask. Like, it's supposed, obviously supposed to be. like Handing her. over the balloon. Right. Oh, they'll forget it. They're yeah. in the same shot. Hand over the balloon to the you know, the next in line or something yeah. like that. So I why mean, did they keep it in there? If it, I don't you know. know what I, mean? I mean, everyone maybe. likes Angela Lansbury, but I mean... Maybe, just... you know, I, I guess for me, I kind of like seeing uh, England time from Ben Knotts and Broomsticks hand over, like, what's <laughs> probably a cursed balloon. Use right. this to fight the Nazis, dear. There you go. <laughs> she sees a reflection in it. And yeah. Stuff. 
it like turns into it or something. I thought in your nostalgic critic review, I liked a lot of those references because the kids, the youngest kid's name is Georgie, of course. Yeah, so the, that the, makes sense. The two scenes that were legit kind of heart melting for me, uh, that I don't think I talked about in the review, uh, is when David Warner, when the Big Ben strikes five minutes late, and he says, "They finally got it right," and that's so stupid. It's just so in his own mind, but it's. It's weirdly justified. It's a weirdly justified emotional moment, even right. though it's just the clock going off. You know, it's, it's silly, but he treats it so seriously. And the other is seeing Lansbury, because I haven't seen her in forever. Right. That voice still sounds amazing. Yeah, and it just absolutely. brings up all these nostalgic feels. For sure. uh, and seeing Dick Van Dyke is cool, too, but I knew oh, he was going to be in it. Yeah. And, and I, I didn't know going into it. I wasn't sure if he was going to pop up or not. But. I, I saw the trailer, and I am like, and I saw him do the little dance. I'm like, well, that's freaking cool. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. so I, I knew it was coming. So it's like, I saw right. it. That's awesome. That's amazing. He's like, you know, a bajillion years old, and he can still move like that. <laughs> yeah, that was probably my favorite part, uh, just seeing him. He just jumped onto a desk and started, like, doing yeah. that stuff. Oh, man, that's so cool. Um, yeah, Dick Van Dyke, obviously, you know, it was just cool to see him there. Um and like we talked about, the Poppins-esque cameo maybe didn't work as well as they were thinking because it wasn't Julie Andrews. But yeah. um, the ending number is still extremely enjoyable. I, I love the balloon <laughs> stuff, and like I, I really like all, all the songs, actually, I like in this. This is one part. of the few recent musicals where uh, a lot of times in, in recent musicals, and particularly in kids' films, mm. whenever they do a song, it's like here we go the song you yeah know? and, and they right. usually usually the film just grinds to a halt mm -hmm. now where it used to be it really gave the movie life this is totally flip where i feel like the songs are the best part and not just uh the music and, and lyrics but the uh the way they're shot and the energy and the momentum is legit good mm -hmm. i mean watching them swim you know under the water yeah. which is clearly a fan just blowing yeah, on them i mean it's going like this what uh, what, what hair moves like this underwater but mm -hmm. it's like it, it owns it. I mean, it owns, yeah, this looks a little fake, but it's also very grand and big and wonderful. Uh, you know, where then you get a scene with, like, the lamplighters where it just looks, it looks like a set and feels like a set. And right. It just feels phony. You know, it feels like, oh, we're trying to do that again, mm -hmm. you know, but we're, like, half the charm, you know. Right. Um, I did want to mention that, so the Meryl Streep part in this always kind of, like, I've seen it twice now. That it, 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 Both times, I'm just kind of like, what? what <laughs> like it feels they like they have to do the ed win scene that's it that's just that's it, it. well we gotta do that because right. in the first one that's this note you uh -huh. know it, it just feels very much like and now meryl streep and then she pops up and is doing a goofy accent and yeah uh um, they do a little number with her yeah so. i mean and you know if that was the only song about looking at something from a different point of view mm -hmm. Fine, but like they're all about that, right? And the number weirdly isn't very entertaining because the set's upside down. Cool. Now what? That's it. That's it. You right. know, that's all we got. And it's one of those where when I really looked at, it, I'm like, man, how much time it must have taken to build this room and have all the little knickknacks and stuff upside down and glue them and everything like that. Like that must have been insane. But then I'm thinking, you know, if you just you know, knocked down half of those, you know, took out half the props in there and made it where the room kept rotating right. or, or would spin other directions or something like that. You could have really had a unique, cool idea. Sure. And, and, you know, and imagine the kids sliding down the walls or maybe it spins the other way and they have to run around and say, like, it could have been so much fun, but because you just have that one set, mm -hmm. it's just them running around circle. We're upside down. What? <laughs> and, and that's it. So, yeah, it just seems like a... Again, just like most of the things in the movie, just a missed opportunity. Right. Speaking of repeats from the original one, Jack, the Jack character in this, it, is ju it just feels like Bert. I mean, it, there's yeah, like no well, difference almost. Well, and that's something... I mean, well, I mean, it's obviously Dick Van Dyke has such a unique charisma. Even Lin-Manuel mm. Miranda can't match that kind of thing. But no. He's still, um, like, it's enjoyable to see him in there, but it's it's just so obvious. Yeah. <laughs> From the I, costume to everything, you know? I'll, I'll say... I don't know. I don't want to say he's doing an impression of Bert because that doesn't seem fair. Uh, because, because he's a, a legit, charming, cool guy. You know, yeah. it's well, well, Bert's very much like this. Hey, he's very much like this. Well, I mean, just a very different pitch. kind of higher pitch and yeah. stuff. Uh, but yeah, but they make it look like him. He's doing a similar. Right. I mean, I guess he has one job in this. At least he's not going from job to job. So that's yeah. something. <laughs> but uh, he, he, yeah, he's had more jobs than Barbie. But at the same time, <laughs> I feel like you're just gonna look at him and constantly compare him to Bert, 
which with Emily Blunt, I mean, she looks different, she talks different. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, it's still supposed to be pop, and so if you do make a connection, that's okay. Where this is supposed to be a totally different character, but it's clearly, that's just meant to be Bert. Mm -hmm. um, but that is one of those where I'm like, I don't know how I would get around that, because clearly you need a Bert type game. You Bert need to reference Bert somehow, because he right. was such a big part. And they do, very early on. Yeah, you know, but it's like, them. you know, okay, but this is Bert now. I mean, they're, they're just trying to do that, and that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, that's stupid, but even I don't know how I would get around that. How do you just, you'd have to make just such a different character. I mean, mm -hmm. just something 100% different. Um, while also somehow referencing Bird, and that's tricky. That's a hard thing to do. So it's one of those things where I look at him like, yeah, kind of lame, but like I don't have an answer. <laughs> you know, right. I don't know how I would fix that up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things you talked about a lot in the Nostalgia Critic review was how, like, sort of a slave they are to the formula from the first one, but also not being true to the spirit of it. So I thought that was an interesting dichotomy because we, I, I, you know, titled this one. What if uh, Mary Poppins Returns was a more faithful sequel? But you could argue that it is because it does hit all those same beats. But as you pointed out in the fanscription video, it doesn't have the heart sort of that the original one does. Yeah, it's like having a mathematical formula that reaches a hundred and you use the same formula, but you change the numbers. Mm -hmm. and it's like, but the numbers are not going to add up to a hundred. But we have the formula. It, it doesn't work that way. There's a reason, you know, fifty plus fifty equals a hundred, not fifty plus you know, five equals 100, you know, you, you need the same, you need the same elements that add up. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's tricky because you want to change things, but you want to do things exactly the same too. Mm -hmm. And there's very few times where I feel like that can work. Uh, I, top of my head, the closest one, I think both works and doesn't work is the Back to the Future movies, where it's like, those are so blatant I, I in how they do the exact same but thing. It's kind but of the, that's the point of but it. But that's almost. also kind of what's really funny. Right. I, 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 like, I, I love hate... too. I know everyone does it. Like a lot of people, I'm getting older and realize that people don't like Back to the Future too. I just like my favorite Back to the Future. <laughs> I love it, Back to the Future too. It, it's one of those where it's like, yeah, I, I, even when I, when I was a kid, I really didn't like that they did the exact same thing. Mm. But then as I got older, it's kind of... It's kind of so insulting, it's amazing. <laughs> Where it's like they're just so blatantly doing the same right. thing, and then you kind of look at it, it's like, well, but that's just kind of how these people work in timelines. They kind of follow this formula. Uh, yeah. Isn't that weird? And it's like, it's so lazy, but it is really I, funny. <laughs> I love them going into the first movie and just having a, a different perspective on the same events. I Because when I was growing up, i never seen that before. I just thought that was such like a genius idea. Uh, and I still think it's very well done in the second movie. It's very um, clever. It, it, it is one of those things where I'm always like, I don't know, it, it is hard for me to get into the second one because I'm just like, yeah, but I've seen this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to see them again. At least with I love the, it. I just, at I least with the everything. third one, you're in a totally no, different environment. Sure. Which but the like. same things also happen. But again, no, they that's do. Also the, that's kind of the point of like history repeats itself is kind of the theme of the Back to the Future movie. That's also my favorite fifth is the third one when he's like, give me a 10 to come out. One, two, yeah, yeah. Three! <laughs> that is great. He retains an underrated character. Thomas <laughs> Wilson is an underrated actor, actually. He's, yeah, he's a lot of fun. You ever yeah. seen him at uh, conventions? Yeah, I've seen him like his, song, right, his songs he does. He's stuff. mad funny, man. Yeah, he's fantastic. But where I think Mary Poppins Returns differentiates itself from you know movies like Back to the Future 2 is that this is such a far-off sequel because the original was in 1964. Yeah. And this is 50-something years, 54 years later. I mean, very rarely do those long off sequels work, you know? I mean, yeah, well, you have off the top of my head of like Mad Max, Fury Road, uh, Rocky Balboa, a lot of people like. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's legit. Later. Well, and that's a series that very much followed that formula, you right. know, and still does. So, right. Uh, still but, love it. <laughs> but, but, but they add some interesting spins, mm -hmm. some interesting point of views, and for stuff sure. like that, where it works just well enough where you're like, damn it, this, this really does make an impact on me. For sure. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I'm thinking to myself, this has, a, the more I'm thinking of it, like a little bit of a Ghostbusters reboot feel where it's like, yeah, we're going to do these notes, but yeah. it's like, but something's really off. It's like you're, you feel like you're doing this because you have to hit these notes, not because you really want to tell this story. And I think that really shows with, like, the first Mary Poppins, they're working, they're butting heads. They're like, no, it should be about this. No, it should be about that. This song should you know, be the highlight. This song should be the emotion. Like, right. they're talking about how do we tell a good story, not, okay, how do we do 
that again faithfully and do it well and stuff like that. Where in the first one, they're like, let's just make something good. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't even have, because there's nothing before this that exists that we're trying to replicate. We're right. bringing people it's something new. Thing. Uh, that's why sequels are so hard to do. You have to recreate that. You have to somehow recreate the spirit while giving them something very right. different. It's a balance type of thing. Yeah. And then, like, it, it, it it's tricky, but right. it, it, it can be done. For sure. Um, so let's get into some of your changes in this. So you wanted to bring, like I said earlier, sort of the original spirit of the more complex emotional stuff from the original movie into Mary Poppins Returns. So do you want to talk about some of your choices and why you made those choices and differences from the original? Well, the big thing is if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a sequel this long and, and far away, um, I feel like something has to be upped. You know, is something you know aside from just the technology. And I feel like making the, th- in a sense, R- Returns was kind of on the right idea and like, you know, they do want to up the threat, but it- it's not just a cartoonish bad guy, literally and figuratively in this case. Right. Uh, you know, I feel like if they up a real threat and they make it more adult instead of more childish, you can really have something. So I think having the threat of the house going away could be really interesting. And ha- having the threat of... An adult with a child losing his way, uh, losing an important element that was in his life that, you know, that really balanced things out and then it's gone, things go really out of balance and showing you can come back from that, uh, but things will get worse and you have to face the consequences for it. I think that's a good lesson for both adults and kids. Sure. Uh, You know, it's a tough lesson, but that's why you have the bright songs and the colorful things going on and stuff like that. And eventually, but they also help shape the lesson they also help show you uh how this stuff can work out that's why i think the songs are legit good in mary poppins returns they just don't have a story to support it so if you give a story that actually says hey look at this from this point of view nothing physically has changed but the way you look at it can change uh so that was kind of my thought with you know the kid is bratty uh you know and the father is truly lost he's not just oh i lost the bills and things are a little chaotic like he is just lost. he doesn't have a job uh you know he, he's he got he, fired from mi6 yeah <laughs> <laughs> right. i just when i first saw him, it's cute <laughs> <laughs> i did not know that yeah, okay that's yeah. interesting yeah. um but she made a cute joke damn it <laughs> but anyway you know as someone that because i feel like everybody's either been or seen somebody like that that has just really, really been lost. Mm. Uh, and it seems like they can't get their life back, like, like they just sort of slip deeper and deeper. Uh, but some of those people do come back, and they do yeah. turn things around, uh, you know, even, even with kids. I, I mean, they can turn things around. Sometimes within the kids, they can see what they need to do. Um, so I feel like sort of both the losing of the house and sort of the losing of the relationship between, you know, the, the father and daughter, uh, could, that's where those can really be tied in, where, where they, yes, they lose the physical side, but they kind of get closer and they find out more and more what matters. And when they realize that, they have a more chipper outlook. They, they get more positive, more, uh, they, they see the world differently. Mm-hmm. And that way, sort of, more opportunities open up to them when they're more positive because that's definitely something I notice uh you know more positive people realistically positive people uh you know they don't think if I just think hard enough something good's gonna happen but Mm -hmm. I mean but that attitude does make a big difference confidence makes a huge difference Uh, so I like the idea that when the house is when they actually lose the house they lose the house Bambi's mom is dead you know (laughs) something you're very clear about yes Uh-huh. You know, but but that's one of the great things about Disney. It's like, no, uh-huh. we're not going back on this. Uh, so so when they leave, they they grow closer because they thought the things that actually did matter. It's like, well, that doesn't matter as much as what we have. Mm-hmm. You know, the connection we have, uh, and they have to live without it. But having that connection made stronger actually makes them, uh, you know, what appears that like they're going to be more prosperous they're going to get the job he always wanted do the things he always wanted to do and uh you know they're going to grow closer together they're already much closer she'll come by and she'll sing the song with him and stuff like that and they make each other feel better uh so there's kind of this responsibility that's grown but also sort of this more fun confident um feeling that grows within them too so i and that i feel is much more what mary poppins is sure about rather than to stop the bad guy you know kind right. of thing do you think that i mean you obviously rewrote it was this film that you were rewriting which came out just last year do you think that this actually taking place just 25 years later would have worked better if this came out in 
what it was 1989 I guess that would have been um, how, do you think that would have worked better and you could have had some of the other characters back maybe you could have brought Brick back to play oh it? you mean like actually have Julie Andrews fly in as Mary Poppins yeah. and but, I mean but... well that's that she might have been too old at that point um, because she would look very different yeah, so. yeah that, that would be weird Right. So what? So do you think like it would have only worked now? In just your opinion, your version of it, would you have enjoyed it now, or would have you? Would you think it would have worked if it was a real time gap between the movies? Uh, it, you mean like a legit twenty five years later? It's actually shot twenty five years yeah. later. Uh, it maybe some recasting or whatever, but using your same story. If this was the movie that they tried to put together and you changed, you know, do you, you think know, this would have worked? The eighties is harsh, uh, which I love it for that. Right. Um. But the the messages are usually more simple, you know, like Return to Oz, there's no place like home, right. and Flight of the Navigator just wants to get home. It's very home based. Yeah. Um, Alvin the Chipmunk just wants to get home, you know, that seems to be it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like um, I don't know if it would have worked as well in the 80s, uh, even, even the late 80s, because I think around that time there was kind of this thing that's like, you know, they want to be darker, they want to be grittier. And screw hope! Come on! It, when when the Joker dies, Batman killed him. You know, Batman <laughs> kills people in in, in uh, eighty nine. Yeah, Batman. Yeah. So I, I think that that wasn't the right time. Where now with stuff like you know the Pixar with the Toy Story movies mm -hmm. and even Disney with like Frozen and stuff like that, their messages are getting a little bit more complex. Uh, sure. But they can also still tap into those dark moments. Uh, for the most part, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing now. But for a while, they you know passed like maybe eight, you know, nine years, they've really been tapping into the dark stuff, but bringing you back to the light again, I think that's why yeah. people have been responding to them so well, and that's why I think people are really missing that now, because there are so many remakes, and they're, whatever they're trying to do to them, they're just sticking to that formula, and none of them has, have been as good as the original. Sure. Um, it would have been fun to see a couple more Mary Poppins movies, because, like we said earlier, there are books out there, but, you know, just the butting of the heads of of the creator and Walt Disney and stuff, it just probably probably wouldn't have worked out. You talk about like right after the original. Year? Yeah, I mean, if they would have made like, you know, I could totally see them making this the Mary Poppins character kind of like a James Bond, where like you just get recastings and stuff. I could see that happening, or I could have seen that happening throughout you know all these years. Yeah, um, it, because it's it a very to, evergreen character. It'd be tricky to come up with different uh, problems. Uh, you know, the family sure. would. I, I imagine yeah. she would have to go to different families because yeah, keep absolutely, it can't be just the Binks. Um, kids. But uh, that would have been interesting. Mary Poppins returns as well. They just made a totally different family. But I, right. I know why they kept uh, the family. Like, yeah. like I get it. But yeah, it might have been more interesting if they switched it up. Right. Um, and in the movie, so the first time I saw this in theaters, I, I liked the songs a lot. I, I liked the acting, but I wasn't a big fan of the movie itself. The second time I watched it, right before starting editing the fanscription video, I liked it more. I think that's just partially because I'm used to it a little bit. <laughs> um, and I kind of just picked out the stuff that I liked and was just kind of like, you know, blanking out on the stuff I did <laughs> um, the first time. So um, I did. I do think there's some worthwhile stuff in this movie, especially the oh, yeah. acting. I, I really like uh, the Michael character in this. Uh, I think the actor does Both really him well. and the woman that plays Jane. Are... Right, that's what I'm saying. I think that they're believable. He plays a really sympathetic father who lost the wheeler and everything. So um, the kids... Or okay, I guess. The They're youngest, not given anything. Right. Well, what can the they do? The youngest kid's a little, like... <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, I miss mother. Yeah. You know, when, when they're but, fighting over the, the pot, and he's like, like, put that away! And, like, runs at and I was like, okay. But again, what geez. do you tell him? You know, your character is sad. I know. Go. It, right. It's like... It's a kid. It's yeah, just, that, that, that's all he's given. I mean, they're not given much. Um, right. And the, when I watched it again, I did see, like, they're trying to give them a little bit more. Like, no, they're the ones kind of running things and being mm. responsible. Yeah. So it's like, I'll see, but they're so tucked away and just thrown away. And usually I say, you know, I want more salty in movies, but that one, I mean, it's it's like non-existent. Mm -hmm. You know, you, or at length put it this way, you don't see the downside of them acting that way. You only see, well, they're calling the plumber. Well, he's taking the jacket oh, the kid, off. The kids are very perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah to, to a point where it's Except like you don't... One, but yeah. yeah, but to a point where it's like you don't even see what the problem is. You mm -hmm. don't see them being, you know... Well, they don't know how to have fun. They're right. arguing with each other. Maybe some with other kids, you know. No, I, I'm not. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street, the 
girl acts like she's way too adult. Oh, yeah. And, and, and they say, you know... It's a good call. Yeah, yeah she says, you know, the teacher wants me to pretend I'm a bear. I said, I'm not a bear. I'm a girl. Oh, why didn't you tell him you were a lion? No, I'm not. I, you know, you get it. You see right. why this is a problem. In, in Mary Poppins Returns, you don't see why it's a problem. They seem like perfectly behaved little kids and yeah. you don't see why he, that's that's good and you know and he seems honestly like a pretty good father he just doesn't you know he he lost the bills and the sink explodes you know the sink but, explodes yes <laughs> but it's like the house looks pretty clean right. <laughs> you know it's like oh it's low lighting well, that doesn't mean the so the lighting's bad doesn't mean that like the place is a disaster it just mm. means like he lost the finances which he had you know he had the shares or whatever you know yeah. it's the evil bank you know so mm. i don't know i still don't know like what the what value we were supposed to get from that the family is good cool right they knew that <laughs> <laughs> um one of the things in the nostalgia critic video, video that you pointed out was tying this into all the disney remakes because this is kind of that reboot quill thing that yeah. they, they do now um but it's not an animated thing so it's not like live action version of this it's yeah. just kind of it's well, a for sequel. the most part, some anime, but yeah. Right, well, yeah, but it's not like, you know, the Lion King, yeah. and now they're making live-action <laughs> Lion King. Or, I guess it's still, actually, it's still animated, so I'm lying. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that lie. The, the lion, the Lion King. Right, can, can that win Best pick, like best Animated Feature? Because it's all It'd be animated. hilarious if it won live-action movie. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, could it be nominated for anime? Because it is, it's all animation, isn't it? I don't know. That's just a question to ponder for you <laughs> yes, people indeed. out there. Um, you know, and we, you know, a lot of people are split on the Aladdin movie. I know Tamara loves that movie. You hate it. Aladdin was my favorite uh, Disney classic cartoon when I was a kid, so I'm interested to see if I get anything out of it. I'm not super looking forward I, to it. I sure didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's... It, it's like it didn't offend me as much as Beauty and the Beast, but Beauty and the Beast had more weight to it. I didn't I even feel want like to see Beauty and the Beast. You're missing nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Um, that, so. But uh, no, Beauty and the Beast had a lot of weight to it. So Aladdin was always it has a little bit of weight, but it's mostly lighthearted yeah. and fun. You know, it does it very well. Um, so this one's the same. It's just not good. <laughs> it, it, I'll I end say on it's, that. <laughs> it's, it's technically worse than the new Beauty and the mm -hmm. Beast, but it's like, it, because it's not, but it doesn't seem as insulting. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, any last thoughts on your changes to Mary Poppins Returns or uh, just about the movie in general or the original film? Um, Disney, come back. <laughs> Where are you going? Like, remember when Frozen was like, just took over the world and everyone's like, oh my god, Disney's just like with this and Wreck-It Ralph right. and Pixar. Man, they're amazing. And then just something happened. They're just direct-to-DVD sequel everything. <laughs> just with like live-action remakes. remakes. It seems like the modern-day version of that. Yeah, which, which is a shame. I mean, it's like, I don't know, just get it back, Disney. You got it in there, man. Just, right. just... You know, I mean, take a risk again, you know? Right. It seems like they don't have much, I mean, financially speaking, they don't have much uh, motivation to do that because Marvel is making them zillions of dollars. Well, even these. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I don't know, from a business standpoint, I kind of be like, mm, yeah, these are making tons of money. Why? People <laughs> seem to like these for the most part, I guess. I mean, like the... I, I feel like people are getting... People are more and more people like, are getting sick of them. Right. But it's like... Kids You're always are gonna get that nostalgia. Kids are always gonna like it. Adults stuff. are gonna get that nostalgia, right? Exactly. You know, which is like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Hearing some of the Aladdin songs in IMAX was pretty cool. Sure. You know, it's and, and a lot of people say about Mary Poppins Returns. Oh, Mary Poppins, she comes down and she has the umbrella. I get it. I mm. totally get it. Um, but yeah, I just feel like you can really, even with the remakes, you can add something really different and put like a cool spin on it while still keeping faithful to the spirit. Yeah, and I just feel right. like they're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that you want, try to inject into your version of it the most, I think. So yeah, um, so yeah good job, Doug. I really enjoyed your, your take on it. Um, good job editing that. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's not an easy congratulating, job. Congratulating each other. Congratulations <laughs> on this mic. Thank you, thank you. Um, so next month uh, we'll be back. Um, I think Rob will be back on the podcast too. Um, I'm going to be doing a different version of Spider-Man 3 because Spider-Man Far From Home is coming out in the beginning of July. So at the end of June, I'm going to be fixing that up the best I can. A lot of people like that movie now for some reason, including Malcolm. Why? I still don't get it. I, I like it as much as the other two. I know two. you have a different like a view. But they're all stupid! It. Right, that's what you're saying. <laughs> Everything's campy. But this is, it feels like it crossed the line to me. Um, and this was like one of the first reviews I wrote for my high school paper was for Spider-Man 3. So it's kind of going back to my roots and oh, that, nice. that kind of uh, you know point of view on things. But um, I'm going to be... Uh, 
you know, looking into that a lot and trying to fix up the... I think there's one big thing that I won't reveal yet, but it, an easy fix that... Another know, dance number! Yes! <laughs> one more. <laughs> um, yeah, so look forward to that next month. Uh, Doug, thanks for joining me on, on the podcast this month. Thank you, man. I yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah, um, if you haven't already seen the Nostalgia Critic episode, you probably have. I mean, do it right. <laughs> um, but if you haven't, make sure you check that out. That's up now on the Channel Awesome YouTube channel right here. So uh, we'll see you next month, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.